Hi, friends. Oh, I spent a lot of the day working on my video about one of the new cameras I'm going to review. But I'm not finished with that. It'll take a little while longer for me to get up to speed on some of the new features of it. So, what's on my mind a little while ago is... I got an email from one of my subscribers, and he told me his story. And I kind of like hearing your story about as much as you like hearing some of my stories. I do enjoy them. But this one struck me because it kind of was like deja vu. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. What he said was that he was 55 years old. He was able to retire. He's had a good job long enough to be uh, in a financial position that he could afford to um, retire from his job. Except for one thing. And that was his health insurance and uh, health insurance for his wife, in addition to himself, that if he didn't have that job-produced income stream, he wouldn't be able to continue to afford the health insurance, plus it was related to his employment. He had uh, insurance from his employer. And the chord that struck with me is that that situation, being 55 years old and not having the income to uh, pay for health insurance, but having enough income and assets to support myself in retirement other than that, is not the only reason, but the main reason that I moved to Mexico when I was 55. So let's talk about how that would work. First of all, it's not something that you do lightly to move to a foreign country. And it's not something that you do lightly to leave off your medical insurance in the United States or Canada and come to a place where you're not sure about the quality of the care you would get or the um, quality of the doctors you might run into or the availability of the medicines that you need. So let me talk for just a moment about that. There are a couple of different levels of health care in Mexico. And I can't speak to some of the other wonderful places that you can retire and move to in the United States. A lot of people are going to Thailand. A lot of people are going to uh, Ecuador, Costa Rica, other parts of Mexico. I can only speak to the north shore of Lake Chapala. I live in Ajijic and I've been here for nearly 20 years. The two kinds of health care that you get here are private and government. And let me speak very briefly about government insurance. You can Google all of this stuff, but let's, let me tell you what to Google. That'll be your first step. IMSS is one of the government programs in Mexico provided by the federal government. It's a health care system that is required of employers to provide for employees. It was started that way many, many years ago. And so because it's a patriarchal country, most of the employed people were male. So years later, they decided that females, since they didn't work, they were mostly at home as running the house, needed an insurance plan also, so they started a second one called Seguro Popular. Both of these now, today, are government programs, and they're a little different. Seguro Popular, uh, there is no premium. 
The Mexican Constitution guarantees every person physically in the country, citizen or not, medical care. And if you are here as a tourist with no medical insurance that covers you in Mexico, and you have an accident, a friend of mine had a heart problem swimming in the ocean, to the extent that he turned blue, went to the hospital, an ambulance ride, uh, several hours in a hospital on oxygen, tests, no charge. Seguro Popular, a hospital down near Manzanillo, Mexico, on the coast. He was swimming in the ocean near uh, Barra de Navidad and Malaki in the bay. And uh, that's a true story from a few years ago. No cost, no charge. Seguro Popular. It's health care for the masses. If you have... Uh, uh, need to have your gallbladder out, it might take you a couple of months to get that arranged. And then there's IMSS. Again, it, it's health care for the masses. It's not free. Sancuro. Mosquito. It's not free. Uh, it's... The premium is based upon your age. Um, it's a, about $250 for very young people, and for me, I'm 74 years old. It goes up uh, 70 between 70 and 80. It's uh, about $400 a year. There is at this time. It may change, but at this time, there is no billing system in the government health care system for IMSS. There's no cash register. There's no billing department. Once you pay your yearly premium, you're covered. There's no deductibles. There's no copays. Uh, Lynn gets uh, the monthly meds that she needs from IMSS. And uh, it's what we refer to for our personal coverage. We have IMSS, and we look upon it as catastrophic coverage uh, if something really big should happen. Now, for other regular kind of small stuff, we use the other kind of insurance available in Mexico, and we don't have insurance for private care. Private care in Mexico is world class. I was talking to a friend from the United States just the other day about a medical procedure. He uh, is retired as a nurse, and I was talking to him about this medical procedure, and I explained to him how I was told by a doctor here that it would happen, and he said, no, that's not how it happens. And I went back to my doctor, and I said, I have a nurse friend who said that this is the way that that procedure takes place, and the doctor said, no, we have a much newer procedure here in Mexico, and it's much more, um, it's much easier on you in terms of pain and taking care of the problem. Anyway, my point is that there is world-class medical care in Mexico if you can afford to pay for it, and the cost is about one-fifth of the cost in the United States, and you can get medical insurance for that. Insurance, of course, it depends upon how old you are, what kind of preconditions you have, your family history, your medical history, and I can't tell you how much it costs. I can tell you that it's around $3,000 per year for very good health insurance in Mexico. So we're back to that email I read about a guy's story and my own personal story about why did I move to Mexico in the first place. Because the health care that was available for my wife was very, very good. She's been a chronic back pain patient for nearly 40 years. She has a neural stimulator implanted in her back. The original cost in the United States was $63,000, and that was in 2000, 2000. She's had it replaced here in Mexico, 
and she's had it replaced in the United States. The cost in the United States, now we have Medicare and a supplement, and that happened after we were 65 and had uh, Medicare, so it didn't cost us much at all. Uh, it was a $50 copay after my supplement in the United States in Rapid City, South Dakota, replacing her neural stimulator. The cost for a replacement in the United States, however, is in the $40,000 range if you didn't have insurance. We had it replaced here in Mexico and the cost was about $5,000. And that was at a very good and one of the high end co by cost uh, hospitals here in Guadalajara. San Javier is the name of it. And uh, that's another story that you can go back and listen to about why I canceled my Blue Cross Blue Policy Shield after that. In this video, I'll put a link up here. I've had 800,000 views of it, so go and take a look at that if you want the rest of the story. But what I'm saying today is that you can get world-class medical care in Mexico for much less than in the United States, and you can get health insurance for much less than in the United States. The other thing I want to say about that is that in the United States, even though you have insurance, you will get all kinds of bills from five, six different departments once you have a serious medical problem. You get the hospital bill and the doctor bill and the anesthesiologist bill. Once they figure out that you've got good insurance, you're going to get a whole bunch of people stopping in to say, "Hi, I'm the foot doctor. Hi, I'm the, the I'm the I'm the you know cancer doctor. Uh, uh, getting a, this test is a normal procedure. Getting that test is normal procedure, and you'll find out that you will pay." an enormous price if you have a serious problem in the United States. You will be better off, money-wise, to be in Mexico with no insurance than you would be in the United States with insurance. Now that's for private health insurance, and um, I speak out of experience with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oregon. I can also speak out of an uh, experience with Medicare and a supplement in the United States, and in, for the things we've had to do when we're in the United States, it's worked out very well. I haven't had a, you know, stent put in or a heart transplant, and Lynn hasn't had anything more serious than having her neural stimulator replaced, which, which is a real operation. But uh, Medicare and a supplement, uh, my cost for any of those things has been 50 bucks. So I'm sold on Medicare and a supplement in the United States. Uh, we keep that because we RV in the United States, and I would be scared to death, financially scared to death, to go to the United States without health care coverage. I'm not scared to death to be uh, financially scared to death to be in Mexico without health care coverage. <coughs> I have IMSS, and frankly, I personally have never used it in 20 years. Lynn goes there once a month to get her meds, and we've had checkups and routine, you know, um, uh, just, you know, routine maintenance stuff, like, you know, a checkup to see if you got anything going on. But I have never used it to go like if I, you know, think I've got an infection or um, I have some other, I have, I have diverticulitis occasionally. I get diverticulosis and I get constipated and I get a pain here. And I go to my doctor and it's 400 pesos, that's 20 bucks for an office visit, and he writes me a prescription, and the prescriptions cost about $50. Um, I did, uh, 12 years ago, spend five days in the hospital with diverticulitis, 
It was one of the more expensive private care hospitals in Guadalajara. It was um, San Angela or Del Carmen. Um, and the bill for five days in the hospital was a little less than $5,000. Uh, and that included, by the way, once they got my gold American Express card on file, there too, every doctor stopped in and said, Hi, I'm the doctor for that. And, Hi, I'm the doctor for that. And every one of them was a charge on my American Express card, but the charge was like $60, not thousands of dollars. Anyway... I say this today because if you're in that situation where I was and where the guy that wrote me the email today was, where you could afford to retire except for your medical insurance, start researching. That's what's on my mind today. If you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.